So we're going to go over common factoring. So what we have here is like a standard form of a quadratic. And we want to factor it because factoring it will help us find x-intercepts. Okay, and I'll kind of show you that idea. But in terms of common factoring, we're looking for common coefficients and common variables. So the coefficients are the values in front, and their variables are here. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to divide, or we're going to find a greatest common factor. We're going to find a greatest common factor for both the coefficients and the variables. So let's say for the coefficients, we need to find the greatest common factor between the value of 6 and 27. So we need to kind of write factors out of these numbers. I'm going to need probably a little more room for that. So I'll move this over. What are factors of 6? 3 yeah. and 2. 2, yeah. So we have 1, 2, one other numbers. 3. Yeah, and? And 6. 6, yeah, because we know 1 is always five. Um, another one we have is, it looks like negative 27. Let's just say 27. I'm going to fix that. What are our factors of 27? 1. Yep. 3. Mm -hmm. um, 9. Mm -hmm. um, and 27. Yeah, that's right. So what would be our greatest common factor here? 3. 3, exactly. So this is going to be the coefficient, or in other words, what we're going to divide both of these by. So we're definitely going to divide both of these by the value of 3. Okay. We also got to do a greatest common factor with our variables. Okay. Now, this one's a little different. We have x squared and x. Um, and it might be easier to figure this out. When we're doing variables, essentially we want to break up into the number of variables there are. So for x squared, that technically just means we have x times that x. And for x, well, there's only one. So what we do is we look for the lowest value. Okay? Because there's only one, then our greatest common factor is just going to be x itself. If this was cubed and this was squared, there was 3 and 2, then we take 2 out. So we look for the value of the lowest one in this case. So in this case, we're just going to take x. So together, our common factor is 3x. Is this familiar? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, from there, this common factor, and I've written it in a different color here, but you can kind of write it in black. You don't have to. It's just a differentiate. This is going to be the value at the front of a set of brackets. So we're going to set up a set of brackets, and this 3x will go in the front, so we have 3x. And what's going to go into these places here are essentially division of these. Okay? So what is 6 divided by 3? 2. 2, yeah. And x squared divided by x? X. Just x, okay? And what is positive 27 divided by 3? Um, 9. So we'll say plus 9. And x divided by x? Um, 0. Yeah. Well, technically it's 1, but we don't need to write 1 in because we don't multiply. So this is it. This is our common factor. Okay? So we've got to that part, and we'll extend it in a second. I want to go down and draw a relationship to this. Okay? So this is much harder to look at, um, almost confusing. So technically what it is, is they want you to think of these as being common factors which, uh, between each other. But it can be really hard to see. So I'm going to try to simplify this a little. I'm going to make a let statement. I'm going to say let x plus 8 equal, and we'll just use a different variable. Let's say y. So we're going to replace both of these values with the variable y. So now we have, oh, actually I shouldn't use y because I have y over here. I apologize. So let's, uh, let's call it z. Because technically we have a y here, so we shouldn't do that. y is equal to 3x, and when I replace that, it just becomes? Y. Or, I mean, yeah, z, yeah. It's because I wrote it wrong. And then we have 5 times z. Now when we look for common factors, uh, quickly on top of our head, is there a greatest common factor between 3 and 5? 1. 1, yeah. And will that change anything if we take 1 out? No. No, it won't change anything. So there really isn't a need to take 1 out. Is there an x variable in both? No. What's the only common variable here? Uh, z. Z. So we're going to divide both of these by z. So just like our common factoring before, we set up our set of brackets, and what goes in front is what we're dividing by, is z. And what would be left inside here? Uh, 3x. 3x and? 5 plus 5. five. Yeah. Now, we're almost there. This looks like we're done, but technically we never started with z. Okay, so because we have that let statement, I actually have to go and 
plugs substitute. back in. Yeah. So let's substitute back in. What should this say in the end? Y um, is equal y to? Y equals bracket x plus 8. Yeah. Um, and then bracket 3x plus 5. Does that make sense how they got there? Yeah. Yeah. So making this let statement just makes it a lot easier for us to look at. Okay. That's all. It's exactly the same process as what we had done above. Now, the reason we do this, no. the reason we do this is because we're trying to find x-intercepts, okay? And if you remember from linear equations, an x-intercept is, um, I'll go back to this, an x-intercept is when y is equal to zero, okay? So we're going to extend. I'm going to take this here, and I'm going to take our value of y, I'm going to replace it with zero. So I'm going to say zero is equal to 3x times 2x plus 9. Now this idea might be a little tough, but this is a number times a number to get 0. Okay? There's only one number we can multiply by to get 0. Do you know what that is? Um, number can we multiply to get 0? It's a very simple number. Zero. 0. It's the only one we can multiply. So in other words, this must equal 0 or this must equal 0. One of the two equals zero. We're not entirely sure which, so we're going to test for both. So the extending here is we're going to set both of them equal to zero and solve for x. This is going to help us find values of x. So I split the two. Okay? I know I'm extending a little far. So this will now say zero equals 3x and zero equals 2x plus 9. Okay. Well, in this case, to isolate for x, what would I have to do? Um, divide by x. Uh, and three. Yeah, that's right. So we divide by three, and what would we end up getting? Zero equals x. So one of the x-intercepts is at x equals zero, and this one's a little more complex. I gotta move something over first. Minus nine. Yeah, and then what? Uh, divided by two. Yeah. Is equal to. Negative two over nine. Yeah. So x is equal to negative two over nine, which is negative four point five. All right. So our x-intercepts are at 0 and negative 4.5. And if I type this into an equation, which I'm going to do in a second, that'll give us our, um, it'll show us that. So the equation was 6x squared plus 27x. So our x-intercept should be, okay, I'll take that away. We said it was 6x squared plus 27x. And our x-intercepts are at negative 4.5 and 0. Zero, exactly what we got. So we found our two x-intercepts, okay? And then in our other one, same idea. Whole reason for doing this is to find x-intercepts. So x-intercepts are when what is equal to zero? Y. Y. So we place it. And now what will we do from here? Uh, we, we break them up. Yeah, so let's break it up. And um, zero equals x plus eight. Mm -hmm. And 0 equals 3x plus 5. 8. <coughs> what will x equal on the left? Um, negative 8. Mm -hmm. And this one will do it in two steps. When we bring it over, what do we get? Uh, negative 5. Mm -hmm. And then what? Equals, uh, divided by 3. Great. And that is 1.6. Six, 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 I think, so negative 1.666. Six, six. Yeah. So the x-intercept should be negative 8 and negative 1.666. Six. So let's type this in, 3x, and we're going to type in this exact bracket here. I'm going to try to remember it off the top of my head. <coughs> 3x and 5. Okay. So, 3x and x plus 8. 5. x plus 8. So the intercepts are at negative 8, like we said, and negative 1.666. So that's all that was doing, was finding x-intercepts for us. And that's the whole point. Uh, that's the whole point of factoring, is help us find x-intercepts on quadratics.